I've, I've stated branded content as uh, advertising uh, consumers appreciate because essentially branded content is something which uh, feeds on other pieces of content which is out there, which is entertaining yet informative uh, or in, in a sense pretty much all of it. So what, what, is, what is content? Uh, content can be informative, it can be instructional, it can be entertaining, and most of the times it's actually all of the above. Uh, and how has content changed? In the, publishing, in the publishing world, it's become a lot more collaborative. Uh, uh, there was a lot of examples which was actually stated uh, by uh, most of the speakers uh, in, the, in the past session. Uh, distribution is, has expanded. You've got uh, the digital medium, which has actually opened avenues of, uh, of, of various forms of distribution, whether it's in the mobile or whether it's online, even DTH for that matter. And obviously that has opened up gates of monetization also of this content. Uh, so who has bought about this change? And there's only one person who's actually bought about this change. It's actually you. It's the manner in which you are actually consuming content. It's the manner in which you're actually looking at content. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be actually running one video over here, which I actually thought was very apt for this particular change. I think uh, um, The Guardian got it bang on. BBH created this ad for, for The Guardian, uh, which pretty much uh, talked about the evolution of content to a certain extent. Um, and also, it very uh, nicely integrated Guardian's, uh, uh, you know, multi-screen, multi-form uh, uh, approach of sorts. This isn't right. The three little pigs are the victims. They down two houses. We got what you did. But the pigs went too far. It was a heavy right to defend your property. You've been in trichet quelqu'un. Chin chin chin's up, fellas. Wheeling someone alive hardly constitutes reasonable force. Somebody's going to break the law and intrude on you. Yeah, protect yourself in your own home. A man's home is his castle. It's not got a family to deal tried to blow my house down, I'll do the same. I knew the wall. There's no way on those houses. You had asthma. So what's the truth about the pig's house being blown down? No reason why those two houses, the wolf's huff and puff, could bring them down. The three little pigs have confessed to conspiring to commit insurance fraud, framing the wolf in an attempt to cover their tracks. Their motive was financial, as they struggled to keep up with their mortgage repayments. Guilty. I'm behind on my payments too. I just... How has it happened? I've lost everything. So, how many of you all have actually seen this commercial? Okay, <laughs> so uh, I, I think it's a it's a it's a brilliant commercial because it kind of pretty much uh, uh, factors in all the the, the factors of, of what co of what content should actually be. It's informative, it's instructional, actually in in a sense, and it's also very entertaining. So I I think uh, these guys BBH hit the uh, uh, the nail on the head uh, pretty much uh, bang on because uh, uh, it kind of tells you the, the various areas which, be, uh, which, which uh, The Guardian is actually present in and how it actually goes about creating its content also. So how do brands actually come into the uh, picture when it comes down to stuff of this nature? So brands work as publishers when they start creating content uh, specifically uh, for, for the internet or for any other medium for that matter. Uh, they, they tie in engagement. I think a lot of people have actually started noticing uh, 
uh, you know, call to actions at, uh, at, at later stages of, of advertisements also. So that's a form of engagement, but that's a very rudimentary form of engagement. On the internet and on, on the digital space, you'll find a lot more engaging methods. I'll, I'll actually show you examples of them also. It's also an extension of what they actually can do. On the, uh, uh, the digital medium has actually given them an extension form. Uh, you might have a one minute commercial which runs uh, on television because it's obviously very costly to run it on television. But uh, when you actually take it and, and if they say, see the whole picture on the internet or on the digital space, you can actually even you know, run it for three minutes. A classic example could be uh, the Cartier advertising, which actually ran. I don't know how many of you have actually seen the Cartier advertising, but that was a brilliant ad, which actually, you know, talks about the heritage of Cart uh, of Cartier also in in a three-minute uh, uh, form of advertising and a very visual depiction also of the same. Uh, when it comes to monetization, I think uh, it's not an actual core monetization. Of course, I can put my brand up over there and do some pieces of content out there and make money out of advertising. But if I'm a brand, I really don't want anyone else advertising on that brand. Uh, but as far as monetization goes, it's actually trying to get uh, or rather save money uh, uh, through, uh, uh, through means of actually having content out there, which is entertaining in, in, in a sense. So with connectivity on the rise, my bet is that video is going to be the big driver. Now in India, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, how, how have brands actually gone ahead and, and, and uh, you know, utilized me, uh, the, the medium of video in, in, in content uh, generation? It's kind of like probably minus 1. Because I don't think even, even brands are actually looking at this space very, uh, in, uh, very deeply. because. Most of the times when I actually approach brands also, they, they are saying we are not in the business of creating videos. We are not in the business of uh, uh, creating content. We are in the business of selling our products. Now that's a very uh, old school way of actually looking at it. Because if you are actually creating content and specific content which actually engages the consumers in a certain, ma in a certain form and yet in a subtle way and in a subconscious way, Putting across the brand values across to the uh, consumer, I think that is an excellent way of actually keeping the uh, uh, keeping a brand uh, loyal to that particular consumer. So uh, here's another example which I'm actually going to play, which ran quite some time ago. Um, it was using the medium of video in a very interesting manner, and um, uh, this is a brand which actually sells pizzas, um, and they create. Um, um, a multi-path movie on YouTube. So they used the social media platform, yet they went ahead and created an in interesting form which actually had people very engaged. And at the same time, tried to give, a, give across the message of uh, their delivery of pizzas to wherever you are.
Bro, are you coming into work today? Bing. Bro, what's wrong with your voice? Did you just wake up? Are you coming up? Oh. One double last. Oh, stink! It's delivery! I'll go deliver my pizza. Oh, come on, I can help. You'll be bitten. It's no blood, it's no blood. It, 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 I can help. You to deliver the paper. Come on, come on, come on, please. So then it actually goes ahead and make asks your the decision. consumer to make a decision which path he should actually go ahead and take. And it plays out a video accordingly. Oh. So the, the whole film is actually getting you created by the consumer. So there's a huge engagement which is actually happening in there. And you actually move into different mind. parts. I'm obviously not going to be playing all of them. But... Um, uh, I'll just take you forward. Um, so now advertising is all about storytelling. It's all, all becoming about uh, how well do you actually tell a story in the given time frame we, that you already have. So we've always known that, you know, great stories, uh, uh, there, there, are, there are huge uh, stories which are attached to business successes like, um, you know, Jobs and Scully in a, in a garage creating Apple, for instance, you know. Uh, good storytelling also makes for great chatter online. If you have a great ad which you've uh, come across, or if you've got a great piece of content which you've come across, you'll probably go ahead and take that uh, onto, the, uh, onto the social media and start talking about it. It also strengthens the bond. You see a lot of uh, advertising uh, in the recent past, which is actually, um, uh, for instance, Chrysler and, um, um, Chrysler and uh, you know, America. You know, they sell America to everyone because it's, uh, I think that the tagline is uh, uh, imported from Detroit, you know. So, so I think these are the things which actually strengthens the bond between the consumer who are very patriotic also in that uh, particular fashion. Technology changes how we learn about these stories because obviously you never know uh, where you're going to be actually coming across a particular story. We all, it also changes how we tell those stories. You know, it could be in a form of textual, it could be form of uh, video. And who hears it? Because when you put it out there in cyberface, uh, cyberspace and obviously, um, uh, you know, in, in, in social media, you never know who's going to pick it up because a friend of a friend of a friend who you probably never uh, seen or met uh, picks it up and kind of shares it across. And obviously, in, in, in the digital medium, it kind of begins with the storyteller and it's kind of taken forward with everyone's collaboration. So I'm going to actually quickly run through two, uh, uh, I know I'm way over time, but I'm going to be running through two examples of uh, uh, great storytelling also. Maybe there's three little robots, tiny, tiny little robots. Their job is to make the phone work, and the leader helps decide what their job is, like, like this. Hey, you, hey. You, your job is to help the guys. And they have little tiny robot vehicles, except they have to be careful because they're a little small. For a small guy, they're pretty smart. They can predict the future, past, or present. Actually, they just record the stuff on themselves and then go, they just shoot it out. Just like a slingshot. And then they go through the air and bring a song, picture, 
video, and they're pretty good. Mostly they like doing it because they never actually saw what it was like in the human life. Just like how we don't know what's inside that device. So what's interesting about this, this commercial is that it was created by an eight-year-old. It was, uh, a story was sent in by an eight-year-old. Expedia actually went ahead and told their consumers, go ahead and send us your stories of what you all think is there actually running behind an Xperia. And an eight-year-old boy sent in his, his uh, story, and it was actually got onto screen uh, and directed by Wes Anderson. So, you know, that's kind of like opening opportunities and opening doors to, to various other people. Great, uh, um, great example of collaboration. This is another one where, which I, which I think this brand does things exceptionally well on the internet when it comes down to uh, video advertising. See, there's a good combination of actual advertising which is out there and, and, and a great combination of stuff which is actually just made for the internet. You will not see this as a commercial running anywhere else. It will be just done on the internet or on the digital space. So I just jotted down a few uh, uh, key pointers to actually have a good content strategy. Um, treat content as your asset. Uh, if you are actually going to be doing any pieces of content on the digital medium or uh, any uh, form of branded content, treat it as an asset. You have to actually, um, uh, you know, believe that this particular thing is actually going to do something good for you. It's just not uh, uh, something which you're going to create as a gimmick and then kind of get rid of it after some point in time. Okay, understand your content's environment. Where is is your content going to be actually present on? Who are the kind of people who are going to be on that uh, on that particular medium? And figure out the best way to actually communicate with them. Uh, ask why. Start small. There's no problem in starting small. Uh, a lot of people make the big mistake of actually going the whole hog and and you know creating the the big guns and the and 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 the the big production and it eventually doesn't really work out and they've kind of lost a lot of money over there. Uh, uh, don't underestimate the content creation effort. I think that's a very key point because I've, I've, I've met a lot of uh, brands who actually take about three months to uh, decide whether they actually want to do any, any form of branded content and they ask for delivery in 15 days. You know, it should technically be the other way around. Um, content needs to be monitored constantly. Obviously, if there's content which is there and it's, it's doing well, great. If it's not doing well, the last point comes into effect, which is be prepared for change, because if it's not working, something's going wrong, you need to change it. Thanks. Just a few, uh, just a few um, uh, case studies. You guys can actually uh, um, you know, uh, Google them or get onto YouTube. Uh, but these were some of the great uh, uh, pieces of uh, um, uh, branded content which actually work really well. The Obama campaign, I think everyone's aware of that. Uh, the Old Spice campaign, again, uh, a very um, uh, uh, you know, uh, famous campaign. And obviously, you have the links and the axe uh, campaigns worldwide. Uh, they create 
some excellent pieces of content just made for the internet and the digital space. The Doritos Crash the Super Bowl campaign, it's been running for, I think, about three years now, and uh, they do exceptionally well when it comes down to that. And obviously the Red Bull videos, because if you get onto the Red Bull uh, YouTube page, you'll actually see multiple videos which is just created for the digital space. Thanks. <laughs>